Have you ever gone for a walk in nature and had a feeling of wonder wash over you? Have you ever started to feel a connection with the environment around you? A connection that makes you feel like a massive giant compared to the tiny brooks you can easily leap over that to smaller creatures would be like jumping a wide river. At the same time, it makes you feel like a tiny speck compared to the tall trees that reach up into the sky or the sprawling view of the landscape from high up. There is something really nice about this feeling, and Hilda is a show that manages to capture that brilliantly. Hilda was created by British cartoonist Luke Pearson and based off of his own graphic novel series. Outside of Hilda, Luke is known for storyboarding on classic Adventure Time episodes like... Yeah, yeah, let's just not talk about that. The studio animating the show is Mercury Filmworks, a Canadian studio known for their work on shows like Wander Over Yonder, Star vs. Tangled the Series, and recently Kid Cosmic. Pearson and Mercury Filmworks together have created an absolutely incredible series, and I can't think of a better way to start than talking about... Hilda is an absolutely beautiful show to look at. Its characters are drawn in a really cute and charming style. Characters like the Mara have really memorable designs. Look at how her overly long sleeves match well with her long pigtails. It's a really aesthetically pleasing design choice. Then you have the various creatures and non-humans of Hilda, like the elves, who are these cute tiny little stick people, or the adorable flying balls of fur known as wafts, which I desperately wish were real. Look at them. They're so damn cute. I just want to hug one and forget about all the awful stuff going on in this terrible, terrible world. A really clever artistic decision with the show is that instead of drawing low detail versions of the characters when they are at a distance, they instead draw them in a charming little chibi style. This way they save time and money not drawing detailed characters when the audience can barely make out those details, but still makes the characters fun to look at even when they make up a small portion of the screen. The environments of the the show are gorgeous. The natural scenery of Hilda, like fields, mountains, and forests, really evoke a sense of wonder. These landscapes are vast and incredible. The art style of the show is definitely not trying to be photorealistic, but it manages to really immerse the audience in these environments through things like its fantastic use of lighting. Even when we are away from the great outdoors, the show still puts the same kind of artistry into its interiors. Just look at the light coming through a window, reflecting off the dust in the air. Look at all the little details of Hilda's desk that really makes this feel like a room that's lived in and reflects the person living in it. You can feel the immense amount of effort that went into creating the visuals of this world, from the massive scenery that dwarfs the characters to the intimacy of their homes. Meanwhile, the animation of the show is a joy to watch. There is an energy and bounciness to the way characters will move that is really entertaining. The animators effectively use basic principles of animation like squash and stretch to make for some fun character animation. I'm not at all what you would consider an expert on the technical qualities of animation, so I would highly recommend checking out Stylus Rumble's breakdown of Hilda's animation, which which gives a detailed explanation of how the show's animation works. As for the music, the show boasts a large collection of licensed music, often nice indie songs that match the tone of the show quite nicely. Meanwhile, composers Dan Mangan and Ryan Carlson both do a fantastic job on Hilda's score. Ryan Carlson, in particular, during a Reddit thread, said that this was a dream job for him. He loves the show, and his approach to each episode was treating each one as its own distinct mini-movie, with its own themes allowing him to run a gamut of genres while taking musical influences from everything to Bjork to Final Fantasy to My Neighbor Totoro. These 
these two have done fantastic work on the show and help add great music to the fantastic visuals of Hilda. I also want to specifically shout out the incredible opening to the show. It manages to perfectly encapsulate the tone and story of Hilda in just 30 seconds. This one shot of Hilda seamlessly walking through little snippets of each episode of the season is brilliant. There is so much detail put into it, like how in season 1, Hilda's mom helps throw her forward, symbolizing their strong relationship during that season, only for the second intro to depict Hilda pushing her mother away and tripping, showing how their relationship is much more strained this season. This is such an incredibly small detail that most people won't even notice, and yet it's such a fantastic part of the opening. Hilda, in terms of its art, is a masterpiece and one of the best looking cartoons I've ever seen and it has a wonderful soundtrack and score to go along with it. Just the first few minutes of the first episode manages to convey so much about the world, its inhabitants, and our main character, Hilda. We see that Hilda likes to explore and document things, but also allows her curiosity to get herself in trouble. Beyond that, though, we see that she is also a compassionate person who is willing to empathize with creatures like the trolls. Before we even get to the first title card, we already get a decent understanding of what the show and what its main character will be like. And from there we get a show full of entertaining adventures, often based on Scandinavian folklore such as the Nisa, Vitra, and Mara. The show takes these mythological beings and reinvents them in new, interesting ways, like how the Nisa live in nowhere space, another dimension located in the crannies around a house where people tend to lose things. Then there are the Mara, who no longer look like this but are instead mean teenagers who like to give people nightmares for kicks, as well as feeding their magical abilities. It's really cool seeing the kind of fun ideas the show comes up with and makes you look forward to each new episode to see what they'll do next. Something that I really like about the show is its consistency. Most shows, even the really good ones, have the occasional weak episode, but Hilda, over the course of its first two seasons, is at its worst, pretty good, and at its best, some of the best episodes of a cartoon I have ever seen. This consistency and quality makes it a really easy watch that never feels like it drags. Very often, the show will have callbacks to events and characters from previous episodes, like the lost elf clan returning to help Hilda at different points in the series, a sentient cloud from the storm unintentionally helping her in the dragon, the nice old lady that Hilda meets in the third episode, becoming a very relevant character in the second season, and many others. One of my favorite uses of recurring characters is the use of the Mara in season one. After Hilda's friend Frida has a falling out with her, she gets involved in a bad crowd who turns out to be a bunch of Mara, including the first one we met a few episodes prior. Frida starts to learn how to be Amara, but after Kelly, one of her new friends, abandons her in a dangerous situation, she realizes who her true friends are. Then, when she encounters her again while accepting donations for the Sparrow Scouts, the girl's mother tries to donate her old stuffed animal. In an act of kindness, Frida returns the stuffed animal, realizing that Kelly still cares about it, and says, it's never a good idea to throw away your real friends. It's such a nice little story that takes what could have been just a one-off villain and shows the human side of these characters, while also developing one of our main characters. It also does this while setting up how Frida was drawn to the magic of the Mara, which plays into her arc during season 2, where she begins learning magic from the witches at the library, which shows just how well some of these storylines can play into each other. Having these characters and creatures 
regularly return really makes them feel like a part of a world rather than just elements of a story. They don't just disappear once their episode is done and they are no longer directly relevant to the story. Instead, they often find ways to play parts, whether big or small, in future episodes, and that's a lot more satisfying than just appearing for a single episode and then disappearing. Hilda's adventures over the course of the show manage to be creative, fun, and consistent. The show is an incredibly comfy watch that's enjoyable for all ages, but manages to seamlessly balance this tone with darker elements while never feeling like it's tonally clashing with itself. A great example of this is the episode The Eternal Warriors, where two Viking clans have been battling with each other for centuries over control of an amulet that grants its users fearlessness. The battles, for what can be considered a kid's cartoon, get pretty violent, with characters being stabbed, sliced in half, and one of the main characters is even decapitated. However, because they're basically using magical lightsabers, there is no blood, and magic is used to revive people from the dead, so it doesn't end up disturbing the kids too much. And this is all in service of a good story about the importance that fear plays in our survival. The clan with the amulet can't see the other clan as a threat to their lives, and mindlessly rush into battle, unconcerned about their own safety. Meanwhile, the clan without the amulet, because they still have fear, use tactics to ensure their own survival, and always end up outsmarting the other, only to have the tables turn once they are in possession of the amulet themselves. This is a solid way to deliver the message of the episode that it's okay to be afraid, because fear is an integral part of staying alive, and this lesson helps the character David be more accepting of his own timid personality instead of wishing he was someone he isn't. Without the violence of the episode being as impactful as it was, the message wouldn't have felt as strong. Also, the use of violence in the episode makes for some really funny pieces of dark comedy, like the Vikings, upon realizing that they can revive themselves using a potion, start stabbing each other for the hell of it. Or David having his head reattached backwards and needing to be decapitated again to put it back on right. The show manages to play around with some pretty dark imagery and comedy while still feeling like something you could watch with a kid. Then there are episodes where the show genuinely starts to tug on your heartstrings, like the episode The 50 Year Night. The episode is about an elderly man who uses magical magazines to travel 50 years into the past to relive meeting a woman who he fell in love with, but never saw again. Hilda, trying to do what she thinks is best, convinces the younger version of the man to go after her but this results in her and anyone who is a part of the now false timeline being hunted down and eaten by time worms, including another version of Hilda that is killed right in front of her. Eventually, Hilda encounters the elderly man and woman who have now been happily married for years and have lived an amazing life together. But in order to set things right, they sacrifice themselves to the Time Worm, eliminating the life they had to save Hilda's. This moment genuinely brought me to tears, seeing these two embrace as the inevitability that this life they had cannot exist consumes them. Then, near the end of the episode, the old man and the woman run into each other only for the old woman to not go after him, acknowledging that the moment for them to be together passed long ago. It's a really bittersweet moment that highlights the importance of not being consumed by regret and making the most out of life while you still have the chance. Then, after all of that, I wiped the tears from my eyes and continued to watch, only to find myself crying again at the very next episode. It's not really that often that I cry at stories, and Hilda managed to make me do it twice in a row. If that isn't the mark of a show that knows how to draw emotions out of its audience, I don't know what is. Hilda is able to perfectly juggle its different tones, elevating what was already a really fun Adventure of the Week series into something even greater. 
A character that plays off of Hilda really well is Victoria Van Gale, a weather woman that Hilda idolizes during the first season. At first, she seems like a kind woman, albeit a bit eccentric. She's happy to show Hilda and her friends around her weather station and seems like a really knowledgeable person. But as time goes on, we discover that she was no longer content with just being highly accurate at predicting the weather. She wanted to be able to control it, seeing such a thing as a benefit to humanity, the result of her actions creating a massive storm over Trollberg. Then it is revealed that in order to try to control the weather spirits, she kidnapped a baby weather spirit and used it as bait to lure the rest. Hilda is disgusted at her actions and releases the spirit, destroying Van Gale's station in the process. Her entire life's work, gone in an instant. Then, later on, we meet her once again, living out in an abandoned windmill. At first, it seems that she learned her lesson and is now happily living a simple life surrounded by nature. But as time goes on, we once again see that she can't help herself. She builds an artificial Nisa in order to try to get access to nowhere space, all in an attempt to get access to infinite space that humanity can build and live in in order to avoid deforestation. She doesn't realize the danger that such a portal could create, as well as how it's completely inconsiderate of how it would affect the nowhere space's residents. Instead, she just mindlessly pursues what she thinks will help people, and in the end, she pays for it by being teleported away to who knows where. Part of what makes Van Gale such an interesting character is that she is Hilda, looking at a mirror of herself. Hilda is pretty similar to Van Gale. She's smart, a bit of a weirdo to the average person, but kind nonetheless. However, also similar to Hilda, she is someone who in the pursuit of doing something good has her good intentions backfire because she can't recognize the consequences that her actions will bring. She represents what Hilda could become if she doesn't try to learn from her mistakes and consider how her actions affect others even when she has good intentions. One of these days, Hilda's actions, whether she means well or not, could backfire permanently, and it's important for her to avoid being like Van Gale, or else she too might end up with a similar fate. Another character when it comes to Hilda that is worth noting is Eric Alberg. Unlike Van Gale, who represents the kind of person she could become if she isn't careful, Eric is the opposite of Hilda in almost every single way. At first, Hilda is happy to meet him since he has the kind of job she'd love to have someday head of Trollberg's safety patrol. Over the course of a day she spends with him though, she quickly begins to realize that the man is an egotistical, selfish, ignorant moron. Unlike Hilda, who loves and has a connection with the strange nature surrounding Trollberg, he believes that it is a danger to be forced away while having barely any understanding of it. He isn't interested in actually respecting nature or protecting protecting people, his one and only concern is making himself look good. He insists on ringing bells at trolls despite being aware that it only angers them because he wants to endanger himself and the people around him so he can play the hero. He wrongfully presents trolls as a much greater threat to the public than they actually are and implements devices that only cause harm to the local ecosystem while putting the people of Trollberg in actual danger, all while taking credit for other people's accomplishments. He absolutely perverts what it means to be a hero and an adventurer. Hilda, for as flawed as she can be, doesn't care about what others think of her. She loves adventure because it gives her life excitement and satiates her curiosity about the world. And when she does something good, it's because she genuinely wants to help people. Eric only sees adventure or good deeds as a way to make people 
like him so he can get a statue like his grandfather. He actively and often purposefully makes the world a worse place and gets praise for it. This makes him a good foil to Hilda throughout season 2. Beyond just being a foil to Hilda, Eric reminds us how Trollberg can't keep the magic of the world away. Despite the city's massive walls, Hilda encounters plenty of strange creatures and magical beings over the course of the story. Trollberg was a city built on the idea of creating an environment for humans to keep out the dangerous outside world, but so much of that world has still managed to seep into Trollberg. It manages to persevere and render those massive walls meaningless, showing just how worthless and counterproductive these attempts to separate humanity and nature are. If trolls ever felt like going into Trollberg, they could, we've seen it happen before. Instead, much of the potential dangers of Hilda's world are passive beings who only become a threat once agitated, with trolls being a very clear example of this, with most of them being fine around humans, so long as they don't act aggressively towards them. Environmentalist messaging is definitely not a new thing to cartoons, and is often looked at as heavy-handed but Hilda manages to deliver these messages through really solid world building and storytelling. It shows the importance of humanity and nature living in balance, not just for nature's sake, but for our own. Because when we fight nature, nature fights back. The last main topic I wanted to leave on is the relationship between Hilda and her mother, Joanna, one of my favorite things about the show. They both care about each other deeply, living alone together out in the wilderness throughout Hilda's entire childhood. They were the only people they had to keep each other company outside of Twig and Woodman. This led to them having a strong bond that can be felt from the very beginning of the show where they are happily playing a board game together. However, Joanna thinks that they should move to the nearby city of Trollberg, partially to get away from the hostile elves living nearby, but also because she wants her daughter to have the opportunity to befriend other kids instead of isolating herself out in the wilderness. Hilda doesn't like this idea because the wild is all she's ever known, and she values the freedom and adventure that comes with living in a place like that. But once their house is destroyed, there is no choice except to move. Joanna's hopes for Hilda are realized when she actually does befriend some kids at school, but for her, the adjustment to the city is much harder. She can't get enough work as a graphic designer to support her and Hilda, likely due to the extra expenses of living in the city. Because of this, she has to take another job at a hardware store to make ends meet. Despite Hilda being against the move and Joanna being for it, Joanna is the one who had to make the harsher sacrifices to make this move happen. She shows just how much she cares about Hilda by putting what she felt would be good for her daughter above what would be good for her. Hilda, despite now living in the city, manages to find plenty of opportunities for adventure, probably even more so than when she lived out in nature. But Hilda isn't honest with her mother about the kind of things she gets up to. Time and time again, she lies to her mother and makes up excuses for why she's out so late until eventually she is caught in the lie and her mother grounds her. This is horrible for Hilda, as someone who strongly values her freedom, but she finds out later on that this is a decision that emotionally destroyed her mother. Even though she seemed to show conviction in her choice to ground Hilda while in front of her, when she's alone in her car she breaks down in tears, unsure whether she made the right decision or not. It hurts her to see Hilda lie to her, and she feels she must make her learn that this behavior isn't acceptable. At the same time, she loves Hilda. So so much that it kills her to have to punish her because she wants nothing more in this world than for her daughter to be happy. Hilda, after seeing this, does apologize to her mother, but like many relationships between a parent and child, this doesn't mean that the issues between them are fully resolved. 
They bicker later on over leaving tea bags on the counter, with Joanna scolding Hilda over it only to do it herself, making Hilda think she's a hypocrite. I'm pretty sure most people have probably had this kind of experience at some point with a parent. Then, in the finale of season two, the tension between them that has been building over the course of the season reaches a boiling point, when Hilda wants to go to Frida's to give her the ingredient she needs for a magical spell, but Joanna wants Hilda to stay home to play a board game with her. Hilda gets upset at Joanna, accusing her of just wanting to keep her there because she doesn't have anyone else to hang out with, and Joanna sends her to her room in anger. This scene works so well because neither of them are in the right or wrong. From Hilda's perspective, her mother is controlling and keeping her from helping her friend. She thinks that her mom is so desperate for someone to hang out with that she is using her authority to force her to make up for her own lack of friends. To Hilda, her mom is acting ridiculous and selfish. From Joanna's perspective, however, she is someone who has struggled and sacrificed to make their lives in Trollberg work, but despite all that effort, she feels that her daughter is drifting away. Ever since Hilda made friends, she spends much less time with her mother, and those days where Hilda and Joanna would just play a board game are starting to become a distant memory. So trying to have a moment like that again with her daughter only for her to say something that cuts that deep is painful to her. Had Hilda been more honest about why she needed to go to Frida's, then they might have avoided this conflict altogether. But once again, Hilda's difficulties with being open to her mother about the kind of stuff she gets involved in causes conflict between them. But the reason why she isn't as honest as she should be with her mother is that these adventures mean a lot to her. It's a part of who she is, and there is probably a fear that if she is more honest about the increasingly dangerous things that she gets involved with, that all of that might be taken away. We can understand the perspectives of both characters in this situation and why they acted the way they did. There isn't a clear right or wrong in this conflict. It's two characters having an understandable argument rooted in their personalities and the growing issues in their relationship. As the episode goes on, they reach more of an understanding that Hilda should be more willing to trust her mother enough to tell her the kind of things she gets up to, because as much as Joanna wants to protect her daughter, she knows that Hilda is an incredibly capable person. These strange and sometimes life-threatening situations are where someone like Hilda thrives, and her mother, through all the natural protectiveness of a parent, gets that. In a series that has so many great qualities, this grounded relationship between a mother and daughter is one of the things that impressed me the most about it. For as whimsical and weird as this show can get, the story of these two feels so real and meaningful. Hilda is an immensely underrated show. Between its excellent art, animation, music, consistently good episodes, strong world building, and heartfelt character writing, the show is the full package. I'm not really the kind of person to give shows ratings, but if I had to, I really think Hilda is a full-on 10 out of 10 show so far. It's a near-perfect animated show that deserves people's attention. In the dark, dark times that we are living in, I think there is something comforting about having such a charming little show exist. A show that reminds us of the beauty that can be found in nature and within each other. That's something I appreciate, and something I hope more and more people come to appreciate too. Hey everyone, just want to say thank you for watching the video, and if you haven't watched Hilda yet, I hope I got you interested in it, and if you have watched Hilda, I hope you appreciated what I had to say about it. Anyway, if you wish, go ahead and subscribe, it would mean a lot to me, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.